Monday, May 23rd, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So when the IMF warns about the worst economic outlook for the world for over 80 years, we need to take notice. We're going to look at that today. Before I go further, I'd like to uh, make an announcement. Today I'm going to be releasing a very interesting uh, informational video about a junior uh, gold mining company, a great prospect in my opinion. Uh, it's going to be released at uh, 2 p.m. London or 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm not going to tell you what company I'm going to talk about. I think those of you who are into the junior miners are going to enjoy uh, this informational video. And even those who are, even those of you who are not into investing in miners might find it interesting just to listen to it. So Billy and I a little earlier today, but uh, the world <laughs> keeps moving. And uh, I saw this headline uh, this morning, IMF head warns of biggest test sick since Second World War. Kristalina Georgieva says Ukraine conflict is devastating lives, drag dragging down growth and pushing up inflation. Do I agree with uh, Miss Georgieva on the causes of this really bad economic outlook, not just for the uh, third world countries or uh, poorer countries, but for us in the West as well? Not completely. I think they're setting up, they're finding a scapegoat in the Ukraine conflict. They're, they're finding a scapegoat on Vladimir Putin. He seems to be the scapegoat for everything that go, has been going wrong for the establishment in the last few years. And you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Brexit, the 2020 election, and now this. Do I uh, respect the IMF's forecasts and predictions? Not necessarily, but one thing I have to say, usually when they forecast uh, things that look positive for everyone, they, they're a bit too optimistic. And usually when they forecast things that are not good, uh, yeah, they're not as pessimistic as they should be. So I think we need to heed this warning. And uh, this is what she said here at, at the end. And it sounds a little bit like me. I made a video the other day about a silver bullet that uh, the uh, cost of li living crisis, there's no silver bullet to solve it. She said, Georgieva urged all countries to lower barriers to trade help countries in debt distress and modernize cross-border payment systems. But she warned, there is no silver bullet to address the most destructive forms of fragmentation. So what she doesn't tell uh, the public and the world is that what we're seeing is the implosion of the debt-based petrodollar system uh, that we've had since August 15th, 1971, since President Nixon really uh, put the world on a non-monetary system. And I, I repeat it always, as John Exter said, we are in a I owe you nothing system. And that's what it's all about. Of course, she's gonna blame uh, the Ukraine crisis, but this has been brewing for decades and uh, there you go. That's what I have to uh, warn you about this morning. Uh, another interesting headline, and it shows that uh, these days you cannot <laughs> go against the grain. You can't question the globalist World Economic Forum agenda. And the World Economic Forum, I've been warning about them uh, for over five years. I noticed when they got involved in uh, on Facebook back around 2017, 2018, pushing the climate change agenda. I warned my viewers 
and my readers, I, I do have a blog that I, I write there not very regularly, but I'm going to put a link to an article I wrote in June 2020 warning about the World Economic Forum. And Georgieva, of course, she was there at their summer World Economic Forum in Davos. They usually do it in the winter, but uh, I think it's uh, easier for them to go in the summer now. Uh, it's easier for them to maybe uh, have tighter security in the summer because I think people are fed up. But I, I saw this uh, this morning as well. HSBC suspends banker over climate change comments. So that's probably why, uh, yeah, I never went back to the city because I, I don't think like, uh, I, you know, I, I think like a... Uh, like me, I, I don't uh, succumb to people telling me how I have to think. He made some comments about ESG. He said <laughs> it was exaggerated, just goes to show you. Uh, but uh, BlackRock, on the other hand, they've uh, kind of uh, watered down their ESG policy, uh, <laughs> mainly because uh, they want to invest in the energy sector, in, in, in gas and oil, because they know it's going to be very profitable. Like I've been telling you, um, hard assets. Um, with this unraveling of a debt-based system, real things are going to become more and more valuable in, in real terms. But this just goes to show you that, uh, yes, this is another sign that uh, the globalists don't want any discussion, any debate. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. As I said, we're, we're a little early this morning, Billy and I. Uh, I'm going to be uh, leaving home just after 10 today. We're going away for a golf day. Um, it's about an hour from where I live. I'm the captain of one of the... Uh, golf societies in my club and uh, it's our first uh, day out this year so 720 as I said uh, we've got spot gold up just over seven dollars uh, it's at uh, 1854 high has been 1860 low 1842 uh, we've got silver up 20 cents uh, just under one percent at 2194 high has been 2205 low 2175 yeah the stock market uh, rallied quite strongly uh, towards the end on friday and is continuing to rally is it manipulation i actually think uh we could see the the markets um rally for the next few weeks and the only reason that i'm saying that is that i've listened to some well-respected analysts who think uh, that that it will, but at the same time, they think the stock market is in a major bear market. And in a bear market, you do see these uh, uh, rallies, dead cat bounces, as I would say. So the Dow this morning is up over 1%, 350 points. The NASDAQ is up uh, one and two thirds percent or 198 points. Uh, the S&P 500 is up 54 points or 1.4% at 39.55. The FTSE is up 1% at 74.62. The Euro stocks index is up 1.6 at 37.04. Uh, Euro stocks 50, that is. Uh, to the currencies, uh, we got sterling up two thirds of a percent at 125.68. Uh, the Euro is up. Point four at 106.03. Uh, again, people, you need to forget about the dollar index and focus on its strength because the dollar index is a measure of the dollar against other fiat currencies that are going uh, down the road to worthlessness. Um, I mean, gold now is up almost, well, I would say about 3% year to date. So gold is beating the dollar. So the dollar index is is really a distraction, I would say. I know the the dollar milkshake guys would disagree with me, but that there you go. <laughs> um, dollar yen is unchanged, one twenty seven eighty four. The dollar is down a quarter of a percent versus the Swissy. 
97.20. And uh, the dollar is down half a percent versus the U1 at 666. <laughs> That's an interesting number. Uh, let's check the, uh, the ruble. Oh, got the wrong page. Hold on. Rubo. Uh, Rubo was uh, trading just below 60, around 59. So continue to uh, remain steady, the Rubo, to strong, I would say. Uh, Aussie dollar is up 1%, 71.11. Uh, the dollar is down 0.4 versus the Canadian, 127.88. And the Kiwi dollar is up 1% at 64.67. Uh, to the general commodities, WTI crude up two thirds of a percent, 110.70. I noticed uh, the other day it went out, uh, the price of diesel uh, is gone up quite a bit here in the UK. It was stuck around 179 per liter. Now it's like 185 pence. I'm gonna have to fill up the tank this morning. Uh, before I uh, go on my uh, golf <laughs> golf trip, that's gonna yeah, it's gonna make a difference. Uh, Brent crude is up two thirds at one eleven forty one. High grade copper up one percent at four thirty two. U S nat gas up a third of a percent at uh, eight eighteen uh, seventy. And to finish off. The 10-year yield is at 284, up five basis points. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.